Good morning, GYZ and all those tuning in on live. Let's give God a hand clap of praise. This is fourth Sunday. The male chorus would have been singing. So we're going to do a little bit of a male chorus. This is one of our GYZ hits. How many of y'all ain't going to complain? Come on, man, stand up with me. Put your hands together. Everybody out live. Y'all help us sing this. Yeah, I won't. I won't complain. Yeah, yeah. I won't. I won't complain. Oh. So good days. I've had some hills to climb. I've had some weary days. Oh, I've had some sleepless nights. Oh, when I look around, yeah. What y'all? I remember all of my good days. Outweigh my, my bad days. Oh, and I, I, I won't. I won't had some good days I've had some hills to climb yeah I've had some weary days yeah and I've had some sleepless nights brothers but when I look around yeah I remember all of my good days. Oh, my good ways outweigh. Outweigh my bad days. Oh, I won't. Watch it. Sometimes my clouds hang low. I can hardly see the road. I ask the question, though, why so much pain? Watch it. But he knows. He knows what's best for me. Yeah. I'll just say, I'll just say, thank you, Lord. Everybody out there on live, will you just say, I'll just say, thank you, Lord. To the few people in here in the church, we'll just say, I'll just say, thank you, Lord. Everybody in your living rooms, I'll just say, I'll just say, thank you, Lord. If you're looking at this on your phones, I'll just say, Wave your hands and I'll just say, oh, 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 and I, I won't. Watch this. 
Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart, Lord, let it prove to be acceptable in your sight. Uh, for, Lord, you are my strength, and, Lord, you are indeed my redeemer. For this we ask in the name of Jesus the Christ, we pray. May we all say together, amen. 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 God bless you. God bless you. The Christian in the COVID crisis, that's what we are talking about uh, this entire month. And uh, we're excited about what God is doing. Uh, in the midst of everything that we're going through uh, on this particular time and season of our life. And the one thing we do know that this is just a season. Amen. 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 You know, there's only one thing permanent in this life. And you know what it is? Change. The most permanent thing in this life is that things do change. Amen. Let's go to the Bible today. Let's look at Genesis chapter number 28. Genesis chapter number 28 and verse number 11. And that's what we're going to talk about on today. And as we are pulling the scriptures up today, we want and, uh, to, uh, to say that uh, we're going to be talking in a two-part message. And the message today is going to be, how do you keep God's dream for your life? And then on this coming Tuesday, we're going to be talking about how do you discover your dream? Amen. How do you discover your dream? 20 and 11, and the Bible said, and he lighted upon a certain place. Jacob lighted upon a certain place, and he tarried there all night because the sun was set. And he took the, of the stones of that place and put them for his pillows, and he laid down in that place to sleep. In verse 12, and he dreamed, and behold, a ladder set upon the earth, and the top of it reached the heaven. And behold, the angels of God ascending and descending on it. And he behold, the Lord stood above it and said, I am the Lord God of Abraham, thy father, and the God of Isaac, the land wherein thou liest to thee, will I give it unto thy seed. Verse 14. And then he, and thy seed shall be as the dust of the earth, and thou shalt spread abroad to the west, and to the east, and to the north, and to the south, and in thee and in thy seed shall all the families of the earth be blessed. Verse 15 is our final verse. In verse number 15, and behold, I am with thee, and I will keep thee in all places whither thou goest, and I will bring thee again into this land, for I will not leave thee, which I have done, that which I have spoken to thee. Amen? Keeping God's dream for your life. That's what I want to talk about, keeping God's dream for your life. And all of us have dreams. All of us have dreams. Amen? Amen. No matter uh, everything that you look at in life, started with a dream. 
This building started with a dream. Amen. The car you drove in started with somebody with a dream. The telephone that you use started with a dream. So everybody has a dream. Everybody has a dream. The problem is, is that most people don't follow after their dream. They don't do it. And there's the two reasons why most people don't follow after their dream. The first reason is fear. It is fear. We don't go after our dreams because of fear. And, and there are three C's involved in fear. We fear, number one, we don't have the confidence that our dreams are going to come true. The second thing that we don't only fear that we don't have the confidence that our dream will come true, we fear the criticism of others. Be a lot of people won't follow through their dream because people will start talking about me, or people will start criticizing me, or people are jealous of me, or people are envious of me. And so they actually they, they get to the point that they fear the criticism of other people. Amen. They fear the criticism. So number one, I got a confidence problem. The confidence is I, don't, I just don't believe that the dream is going to come true. And then I have a problem with the criticism, my critics who are actually criticizing me. And I, I get to the point that I, I don't, I'm listening to my haters. I'm listening to the people, you know, that, that, that are really talking against me, are really talking. And then the third thing, I fear the conflict that may arise if I do it. I fear the conflict that may arise. I, I, I fear uh, that that you know this, you know that that uh, friends may leave me, or, or family may forsake me, or or people may give up on me, or some changes may come in my life that I don't want. And so so fear keep a lot of people from falling after their dream. The second thing that keep people from falling after their dream is frustration. And what is the frustration that most of us deal with while we don't go after our dreams? The frustration is of number one, not focused enough on our goals. We allow ourselves to become easily distracted, you know, easily taken off to what we're supposed to do. We lose our consistency in what we're doing. We lose our discipline because we lose our focus. And then out of that, we don't have the faith. We don't have the faith. We don't believe God's word and we don't believe God's promises. And we don't stand on that because every promise has a premise. And so we don't stand on the promises of God. Amen. And so therefore, we don't have the faith. And then the third thing, we are frustrated because we're scared we're going to fail. You know, we say to ourselves, what if it don't work? I put all this energy in it and it don't happen. Amen. So I'm going to talk about dreams today. I want to talk about God's dream for your life. Amen. Uh, and I think that there's no better character in the Bible to kind of use this character is the character of Jacob because you got to understand that God is more interested in what we become than he is in what we do. Amen? Amen? Because, because see, no matter what you're going through in your life, God is interested in the process of what you're going through how would it affect your character rather than his concern about how it affects your contribution? See, what you become is what happens in your character. What you do is your contribution. Now, what's the difference between the two things I'm trying to tell you? God is concerned that whatever he brings me through in my life, is this going to make me more holy? Is this going to make me more righteous? Is this going to draw me closer to him? He's concerned what's going to happen to you in the process. What's going to happen to you? All the struggles you've gone through in your life, all the issues you've gone through in your life, how has that made you better and not made you better? So how did that affect your character? Because, see, your accomplishments are going to be left on earth. Your character is you. And that's what's going to go to heaven. So God is more concerned about what you become than he's concerned about what you do. Are y'all hearing me today? And I think there's no better character study that we need to look at this morning. We're going to go through this very briefly. And then the character of Jacob. But I like Jacob, man. I like Jacob because Jacob is a reminder of who we really are. And all of us, um, like Jacob, are a mixture of emotions. And what I mean by that, all of us are good and bad. All of us are right and wrong. All of us got strengths and weaknesses. 
we're just like Jacob, amen? Y'all remember Jacob? Y'all remember Jacob? You know, Jacob was one of the twin sons of Isaac. It was a son called Jacob and Esau, and Jacob was actually the older son, the younger son. Esau was the older son because Esau came out first, and Jacob came out, what, second, holding on to Esau's heel. And you remember the story of Jacob and Esau, that Jacob stole and cheated Esau out of the birthright. He spent most of his life running. He's running, man. He had to run. He ran from God. He ran from his family. And then he spent his life running from his brother. So he spent his life mostly on the run. And God had to stop him from running. And in this 28th chapter, man, I love it. God gave Jacob a dream. And the dream always come with a blessing. That this is what you're going to be able to do. You're going to be the blessing. I'm asking you today. Have you received God's dream in terms of the blessing that God wants you to be while you're here on this earth? Because if you're here, God calls you here for a purpose. And that purpose is to bring him glory and to bring him honor. And there are many of us who will sit down and never got the dream. Jacob got the dream. And God says, you're going to bless. You're going to be a blessing. And all the families on the earth is going to be blessed by you. Now watch this now. In the 28th chapter, he tells Jacob the dream. But in the 32nd chapter, he told Jacob the preparation. See, a lot of you haven't got your dream because you hadn't gone through the phases that you have to go through to get prepared for the dream. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Amen. And so in Psalm 32, I mean, Genesis 32, he gives them the four phases a preparation that all of us got to go through in order for God to give us the dream that we have for our lives. So that's what I want to talk about on today. Amen. That's what I want to talk about on today. So let me give you four C's of preparation. There are four C's that we learned from Jacob on how God prepares you for the dream that you have for your life. And how many of you want the dream that God has for your life? How many of you, how many of you want to be a blessing to the kingdom of God? How would you want your life to make a difference? How would you want to be effective at what God would have you to do? How many of you want to be not only to, to, to fit in, but you want to stand out? How many of you want to be more than decent? You want to be dynamic. How many of you want to be more than good, but you want to be great? How many of you want to represent what's on the inside of you? How many of you want not only want to be natural, but you want to be supernatural? God has a dream, a blessing for your life. It's the first thing, the first thing, first thing, first thing, first thing. First C, I want you to write down today. The first phase of getting the dream for your life is called crisis. When God gets to prepare you for the dream for your life, he sends a crisis. He sends a crisis, amen? It could be financial, it could be health. It could be relational. He says the Christ. And all the time, man, we are so perplexed about the crisis that we don't see that the crisis is the preparation for the dream. God is preparing to do something in your life. I, I remember when I was in seminary, Dr. Samuel Giles told me this. He said, son, misery is only a preparation for ministry. <laughs> when God carries you through something, because he's trying to bring you to something. And so oftentimes we're so busy just focusing on the crisis. But we don't actually see the preparation in the crisis. When we get to 32 and 24, God sent Jacob a crisis. And then what happened? The Bible said, and Jacob was left alone. And then he wrestled a man with him until the breaking of the day. He said a man, he wrestled with him. Until the breaking of the day. Now, what is God doing in the system in terms of that? Because you got to understand that what Jacob had to understand, what most of us understand, we first started off that Jacob was only wrestling with another man. Wrestling in, in Greek days, and particularly in Greek society, was a very dangerous sport because often when they wrestle you, they wrestle you is to pin your opponent to the mat. And what happened, the, the, the result was normally death. But here's the thing is that Jacob is wrestling. He's in a crisis. He's wrestling with this man. And he's wrestling with this man all night long. 
He's wrestling with this man until the breaking of the day. This is the crisis he's in. Now, here's the point that you ought to get. Look at verse number 25. Okay, you go to 25. Verse 32 and 25. And when he saw that he prevailed not against him, he touched the hall of his thigh, and the hall of, of, of Jacob's thigh was out of joint as he wrestled with him. Like he's wrestling with him, and he wrestled with him all night long, and then he cripples him. He caused this pain in his thigh. But listen, Jacob in 26, <laughs> amen, at 24, he's wrestling with a man. At 26, he realized that the issue was not the man, that he was really wrestling with God. Because he says in verse number 26, he said, I would not let you go except you bless me. So the first thing that the crisis had a hold of him, but he realized that he wasn't really wrestling with the crisis, that he was wrestling with God, so now he's holding on to God and said, I won't let you go until you bless me. Okay? Now let me explain to you what, 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 what I'm trying to tell you on today in terms of this particular crisis. All of our wrestling is with God. It's with God. And God lets it keep going and keep going and keep going until you stop talking about what you're going through and stop talking about how bad things are until you really begin to see him in it. And so Jacob, he gets wrestling all night long. It took him all night long until the breaking of day until Jacob realized, hey, man, this is God. And all of us are wrestling with God. This crisis, man, is, is, is done to get our attention. That the issue we're dealing with is with God. It has nothing to do, man. I'm telling you something. It has nothing to do. You can just look at TNN all you want and get all scared. And all these people are dying. And, and we don't know what this crisis is. And the medical music don't have an answer. And God said, hey, I'm trying to get your attention. I'm trying to get your attention. I'm trying to get you to see me in the midst of everything that you're going through. Because the issue is really with God. Oh, my God. Yeah. So the question is not that we're going through a crisis. The question is what are we going to come out with the process? What are we going to become? God got something for you that he wants you to become. So what is the issues that we have with God? Two issues. God asked wants to answer two questions. Here's the first question that God wants to answer. Will you obey me and trust me and do right? Why you in a crisis? <laughs> See, it's one thing to be in a circumstance. It's another thing when a circumstance got you. But no matter what I'm in, I control whether or not what I'm in gets me. And so God is saying, I'm just trying to get you to understand. That's why it's important to me that whatever I was doing when there wasn't a crisis... I'm going to continue to do the same thing while I'm in the crisis. You got to do what you would normally do as though nothing is happening to you. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Yeah, I look at the news. Yeah, I see what's going on. But there's a God that's still on the throne. And so if I trust him before the time, I'm going to trust him in the time. Because you ought to be able to walk through the valley of the shadow of death and fear no evil because you know your God is with you. It's amazing. So God said, God said, God said, God said, you know, and I, I love that scripture in Isaiah 26 and 3, that the Lord will keep you in perfect peace. Perfect peace simply means that God won't let you change. The same peace you had when you had money, God will give you the same peace when you broke. The same peace you had when you had health, God will have you in the hospital bed shouting. Are y'all hear what I'm telling you? The same peace you had when everything was going right, God will let you have that same peace when everything is going wrong. And so here's the thing. God said, I want to know, will you still trust me? Will you still obey me? Will you still do right even though you're in a crisis? You pay tithes and offerings when you came to church. Are you going to continue to pay tithes and offerings now you can't come? I want to know, will you still do that? Amen? Here's the second thing. Here's the second question that God is asking you. Will you trust me to handle your situation? <laughs> Will you trust me to handle your situation? 
Because here's the thing about most people, what, God, what happens with most of us, is that when things are going wrong and right in our life, we are control freaks. When things are going right in our life, we're not dependent on God. We just say, God, I got this. I got this now. We, we're control freaks. We're going to do what we want to do. We're the master of our own fate. We, we, we're control freaks. And so God has to send a crisis. Amen? To make us depend on him. Look at what's happening in our country today. What happened to you today? Amen? God has called the crisis that ain't nobody depending on but him. We can't depend on the medical community. They ain't got an answer. We can't depend on national leaders. They ain't got an answer. All the PhDs, LADs, DDDs, or whatever these you can come up with, they ain't been able to figure out nothing yet. So we had a situation in our life that says, where can I go but to the Lord? Anybody here know what I'm talking about? We're in a situation right now that I got to lift my eyes up to the hill for what's coming my help because all of my help has got to come from the Lord. Anybody know what I'm talking about? If there ever a time we pray, we praying now. Let me take God says the Christ is number one to get your attention. He's going to get your attention. You get your attention. And God says in that class, you know, let me tell you something. I'm a wrestling fan. I know y'all think it's fake. It's all right, but it's good entertainment. It's called World Wrestling Entertainment. So one of the, one of the goals of wrestling is to pin your opponent to the mat. And when you pin your opponent to the mat, it's the same as saying, I surrender. God has to create a crisis in your life to pin your shoulders to the mat that you got to say, uncle, God, I surrender. God, you're in charge. You're in control. Can't nobody fix this but you. You need to handle this situation. And so that's what crisis does. He sent Jacob a crisis man. He sent to a crisis. You can't get your dream until you go through a crisis. And stop thinking that God has forgotten you or God has abandoned you. God is only preparing you. He said, this is step one and getting you to your dream. Amen. Here's number two. Here's number two. Write this word down. Commitment. Commitment. Go to verse 26. Verse 26. Verse 26. Verse 26. 26. Amen. And listen to what he says. This is what he says. He said, let me go for the day break it. And he said, I will not let you go except you bless me. Amen. 27. 27. And he said unto them, what is your name? Let, let, let me go back to 26. Go back to 20. I'll tell you what, go to 25. Go to 25. I, I, I want you to get this. And when he saw he did not prevail not against him, he touched the hollow of his thigh, and the hollow of Jacob's thigh was out of joint. Now, God sends crisis in your life because the crisis in your life is a catalyst for change. Some of us won't change until the crisis comes. We can see the light. But often we don't change till we feel the heat. Amen. We don't change. Amen. You come in, you say amen. You preacher, you right. You right, preacher. But many of us don't change until the heat comes. So God got to send a crisis. He set you up. But the next thing he got to do after he sent the crisis, he tests your commitment. He tests your commitment. Now, there are two things that make you committed. And the process of commitment, the two things that happen, I want you to write this down. Number one is patience. patience. Remember now, God could have ended this wrestling match earlier. He could have just took care of Jacob just like that. Why in the world did God let this thing go on? It's unheard of. You know, most wrestlers, they wrestle, what, 10 minutes, 15 minutes? But you're talking about wrestling all night long until the daybreak. Man, you wrestling all night long. So why is God doing that? And off the time I hear people saying, why is God taking so long? He could have fixed this much quicker than now. So why is he prolonging it? Because he's testing your faith and testing your commitment. And you would never know how committed people are until patience comes. God said, what if I don't give it to you right now? Will you still stay with me? What if I don't change it overnight? Will you still praise me? Will you still serve me? How committed you going to be? What if I don't? What if I don't? Bring about the change when you want me to. 
will you still stay with me? Hey, man, wrestling all night long. After 15 minutes, I'd have said, go ahead, man. I, 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 I got to go. But Jacob stayed with the wrestling match. He stayed wrestling with him all night long. God uses patience. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. And second thing. The second thing that God uses, not only uses patience, he uses pain. <coughs> He touched the hollow of his thigh. In the midst of the wrestling match, he knocked his hip out of joint. Pain. Amen. Will you stay with me even though you're in pain? How many people? I mean, how many people have walked away from God because somebody hurt you? You're committed to singing for the Lord, but somebody in the choir said some nasty things to you. How many people who proved they weren't as committed to God as they thought they were because they couldn't endure the pain? I tell my people all the time that ministry has nothing to do with what you got to give to God. Ministry has to do with what you're willing to take. I mean, how much can you take and stay with God? How much when people hurt your feelings and say nasty things about you and make up lies on you, but then you come with a Job faith that's if you slay me, I still trust you. God says, God says, the issue is not the people. The issue is not who hurt you. The issue is your commitment. God is using patience and God is using pain to test your commitment. And Jacob's hip is out of joint. And Jacob said, I ain't going to let you go. Oh my God, amen. Lord, I'm hurting, but I ain't going to let you go. I will not stop praying. I will not stop serving. I will not stop praising. I will not stop doing what I'm doing. I'm not going to let you go. That's commitment. Oh my God. Oh my God. And many of us, man, gave up on God. We gave up on him. We gave up on him. Because he took too long. Or we gave up on him. Because we couldn't endure the pain. And the Bible said Jacob wrestled with the Lord all night long. I said, no, God, I'm not going to let you go. Even with a triple hip, I'm holding on to you. Because all my blessings got to come from you. It ain't got nothing to do with who's in the choir or who's in the church. or who's, I don't care who it is. My blessings don't come from them. My blessings, it come from you. So, God, I'm going to stay with you. Come hell or high water, you can say what you want to say about Pastor Blunt. Pastor Blunt going to stay on the post. He going to stand on the wall. He going to keep preaching the word because I know who blesses me. Anybody know what I'm talking about? You know who your help comes from. Put to your dream is that you got to know how to handle the crisis. And the crisis is designed by God to get your attention. And the cross is designed by God, amen, to get you to surrender. That you could come to the fact that God, I don't care what happens. I don't care what happens. People say, why are you live screaming from the church? That's where I was when there was a crisis. I preach from the pulpit. I don't preach from my house. I preach from the pulpit. Amen. I can still come to the church. I'm going to come to the church. He was with me when there was a crisis. He with me when there is one. So they're saying the midst of everything, miss everything. I hope I'm not boring y'all today. But to get you ready for your dream, God said, you got to know how to handle the crisis. To get you ready for your dream, God said, I'm going to test your commitment. I'm going to test your commitment through patience, and I want to test your commitment through pain. Here's number, number three. Number three, write this word down, confession. Now go to Genesis 32 and 27. In 32 and 27, this is a strange question. And he said unto him, what is thy name? 
it kind of kind of strange for God to be asking Jacob something he already know. He said, what is your name? And he said, my name is Jacob. Now, let, let, let me explain something to you. Let me explain something to you. Name in the Bible always depicted the character of an individual. <clears throat> Y'all name people in anything. Y'all don't never research what the name means. Normally what people would do, they would go to God and ask God, what name do I need to give this child that fits the character of this child? And so what happened is Jacob's name was Jacob. That name had to come from God because, number one, who in the world would name their child Jacob? Jacob's name meant manipulator, deceiver, supplanter, schemer, con man. I mean, who in the world would want to name your child a manipulator, a schemer, a liar, a con man? So why in the world did God Ask Jacob his name. Because see, a prelude to your dream is for you to be able to confess who you really are. Your name is what's in your character. Let me ask you a question. When you look at your secret character, what if people call you by your character. Then what would they really call you? <laughs> your mama named you Mamie. But if they called you by your character, would they call you liar? Cheater? Lustful? Greedy, gossiper, when you really look at yourself on the inside, that's your name. That's your name. That's your name. Jacob, you're not going to get a dream from me as long as you fake. As long as you phony, you're not going to get a dream. You're not going to get a dream from God until you can admit who you are. You got to admit who you are. You got to admit what you are that folk don't even know you. You got to admit who you really are. Anybody know what I'm talking about? You cannot get a dream from God blaming other folk. You can't get a dream from God making excuses for your behavior. Making excuses for your weaknesses. You cannot get a dream from God being hypocritical. So God's asking you and he's asking me, what's your name? I ain't talking about what your mama call you. I'm talking about what I see in you. I need a confession. I need you to stay. I don't care if you got as many degrees as a thermometer. I don't care you Reverend Dr. Archbishop to the third thing. I want to know what's your name? If God had to write a statement and in the statement he says I am, how would you fill the blank? How would you Fill the blank. Can't come without confession. Can't come for the question. The Bible said God resists the proud, but he gives grace unto the humble. What is the humble? What is humility? Humility is not denying your strength. People think they're being humble, but they deny their strength. You know you're a great speaker, but then, you know, you're trying to be humble. You're trying to say, I just couldn't get it together today. I... I just couldn't do it. That's not humility. 
It's, not, it's never denying your strength. Sister Cook is a great cook. She knows she put her foot in the banana pudding. But to come in and say, I just couldn't get that banana pudding together today, that's not humility. She said, I'm just trying to be humble. No, you're not being humble. You're lying. So humility is not denying your strength. Humility is admitting your weaknesses. And the reason why God wants to bring a confession out of you, because God can't bless you until you see how weak you are. Because only in your weaknesses, you're going to see God's strength. Let me tell you something. It is in your weaknesses make you realize you need his grace. You never recognize grace as long as you think you're strong. So when you admit that you are weak, then you begin to understand and appreciate the grace of God. That's why God, in Paul's situation, you know, God had to give God, Paul a thorn in his flesh. Why? Because he says, what? Lest she be exalted above measure. Lest his pride, he focused too much on his strength. So let me give him something that is weak in his life. Because in his weak, he has seen my power. And he has learned one thing about me, that my grace is sufficient for you. You would never be able to celebrate grace as long as you think you all that in a bag of chips, always bragging about how holy you are and how righteous you are. Grace shows up when you realize I'm a wretch undone and I'm not you, God. I can really do nothing. Grace shows up. It's when I understand how in the world you can preach the way you preach through me being the wretch that I am. Grace shows up when you realize how weak you really are. I want to know what your name. Now what your mama called you. And Jacob said, I'm a liar. I'm a deceiver. I'm a schemer. I'm a manipulator. I'm low down. I cheated my brother. I cheated my father-in-law. That's who I really am. And so here's the last thing as I get ready to close on today. You're not going to recognize your dream. You're not, your dream is not going to come until you know how to handle your crisis. And crisis is God's way of just getting your attention. And crisis is God's way of getting you to surrender to him. And the question is that how are you going to go through the process of a crisis? How long should the crisis go on until you get it? And God said, Jacob, 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 we're going to keep wrestling until you get it. Till you get it. If you'd have got it in 15 minutes, this match would have been over. But since you're just going to steal, we're going to wrestle all night long. We're going to wrestle till you get it. Amen? Is anybody can identify what I'm talking about? Is anybody can identify what I'm talking about? And so here's the thing. A lot of you have been wrestling for, for 50 years. And you ain't got it yet. You ain't got it. And so here's what God does. He gave you number one to the crisis. The crisis is the preparation for the commitment. The commitment is going to come for how you treat God when you have to be patient and how you treat God when you're going through pain. God says, I want to see that's how committed you are to me. And then, guess what? Guess what? Guess what? Guess what? Nothing's going to change in your life until you recognize who you really are. So I want to confession. What's your name? Who are you? What's your name, Jacob? Here's the last thing I'm going to leave you. Verse 28. So I told you to write down the word what? Crisis. And I told you to write down the, what's the second word? Commitment. The third word is confession. The last word I'm going to give you today is called conversion. See, conversion is when God comes in and transforms your heart. He changes your heart. And a lot of you men never got to conversion because your heart has not changed. And so here we see in verse number 28, Jacob went through what is called a transformation. This is what God says. Thy name shall be called no more Jacob, but Israel. Oh my God. God changed his name. You can't change your own name. God has to change it. 
He changed his name. He said, no, Jacob, 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 you're no more liar. You're no more schemer. You're no more manipulator. You're no more what your people thought you are. You're no more what your past say you are. Jacob, I've called a transformation in your heart. That's your old life. I've changed your heart. Oh, my God. Amen. That's why you don't, you don't hold your head down when people pull up your resume who know you by your old name. People will pull up your resume and say, well, I remember you were this, I remember you were that, I remember you were this, I remember you were that. They, they knew you before you got converted. But now that you have been converted, God has changed your name. That's part of your whole life. So now, Jacob, you're no longer a liar, you're no longer a schemer, you're no longer a manipulator, you're no longer a con man, you're no longer a cheater. But this is what you are, you are Israel. Now, what does Israel mean? Israel meant prince of God. Not only are you a prince of God, you're a prince with God. God come in and calls a transformation. And when the transformation comes in your life, two things that God would do for you. Number one, he would give you a new identity. Amen. 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 DJ was my old life. Cussin was my old life. Club was my old life. Amen. God stepped in and did a transformation. People say, I know where you can stand here and preach, Pastor Blunt. We remember when you were this. We remember you were this. That, that, that was for my transformation. Now that I have been transformed, God has given me a new identity. <laughs> and somebody other than me ought to praise God for the new identity. And that's why, you know what, let me tell you something. It wasn't subject to you, so I'll never make it about you. The identity that God gave me had nothing to do with you. So what you got to say about me, it is not even about you. So I'm not even paying attention to what you got to say because the transformation didn't come from you. The transformation came from God. So what God did, he changed my identity. Somebody here other than me ought to testify that God changed your identity. Anybody here know what I'm talking about? Do you know what? 2 Corinthians 5, 17. If any man be in Christ Jesus, he a new creation. The old things are passed away. And now look, everything now has become new. God will give you a new identity. Oh, my God. So that's number one. He gave him a new identity. Go to verse number 29. Go to verse number 29. In verse number 29, amen. And then guess what the Bible says? And Jacob said, now, now what's your name? And, and God was telling Jacob, ain't none of your business what my name is. But to hear what happened. Once he changes your identity, then he blesses you. He changed his identity and then he blessed him. Oh my God. When God changed my identity, I am a blessed man. Oh my God. Amen. I'm not hostage to anybody. I'm not, I'm not going to be held hostage to anybody's identity. Nobody controls my destiny but God. If you don't like me, that's fine. You don't, it doesn't really matter to me because you don't control my destiny. God will bless me. Somebody here other than me ought to be able to testify that God will bless you. If you close the door, God open up another one. If you walk away, God will send me somebody else. If you want, if you don't want me, God will raise up somebody's new. If I don't have it, God will show me how to live without it. Anybody know what I'm talking about? I'm a blessed man. I'm blessed when I have something. I'm blessed when I don't have anything. I'm blessed when I got food. I'm blessed when I'm hungry. I'm blessed. Paul said, I've learned whatever state I am to be content because God know how to bless me. If I need it and don't have it, God has sent somebody to bring it to me. Somebody other than me ought to testify. How many blessings you got? Somebody brought it to you. How many, how many things that you had? Somebody gave it to you. Anybody know what I'm talking about? In the end of the day, God know how to bless you. He blessed him. Let me get back to one more point and I'm going to leave you alone. Because see, pain has a twofold purpose. Pain is not just your test. God lays the pain as your reminder. 
Watch this now. Go to verse 31. Go to verse 31. Verse 31. <laughs> and as he passed over Peniel, the sun rose upon him, and he limped. He came out of this thing with a limp. <laughs> His heart has been changed, but God left him with a limp. Now, let me tell you why he does that. Let me tell you why he does that. I did this. When God really blesses your life, <laughs> he leaves you with a weakness. Have you ever had this thing in your life? You said, God, I, I wish I didn't have this. I wish I didn't have this in my life. If God, if you would take this away from me, I could be much better for you. I could be much better for you. Paul said, this storm is irking me. It's paining me. I need you to move this away from me. And God says, no, I'm not going to move it. I'm not going to move it. You need every bit of that because I'm not going to move it because that pain is going to keep you trusting me. That pain is your reminder that you can't make it through this journey without me. That pain is going to make you fall on your knees. Now watch this now. Watch this now. Watch this now. See, people understand your weakness is not your crutch. Your weakness is your power. Because you never recognize your power until you recognize your weakness. Jacob spent most of his life running. God says, when I get through with you, you will never walk the same again. <laughs> God said, I'll stop you from running. He now gave Jacob. I can't run no more. Everywhere I got to go now, God got to carry me. Everywhere I got to go now, I'm going to need his power. Everywhere I got to go now, I'm going to need his strength. Everything I want to go now, I can't make it on my own. Everything I got to go now, he's going to have to help me through this. Everywhere I got to go now, you got to carry me. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Your crutch, your weakness is your blessing. So I challenge you that God cannot give you your dream until you go through your preparation. How do you handle your crisis? How do you wrestle with God? Will you obey him and do right by him in the midst of this crisis? That's my commitment to God. I'm going to do right by you and I'm going to still obey you in the midst of this crisis. And God, I'm going to trust you to handle my situation while I'm in it. Oh, man, that's shouting station right there. That's shouting station right here. I ain't going to be up all night long. I'm going to bed and I'm going to sleep. I'm just going to trust you to handle my situation. And God, thank you for testing my commitment. With patience and with pain. And God, I stand before you confessing who I really am. I'm calling my name by my character. Not what my mama called me, not what my church calls me. But God, what you see about me. This is who I am. And I need a transformation. And God will step in and convert you. And when he changes, your, changes you, he will give you a new identity. He will also bless you. But he will also leave you with a reminder that you can't make it 
without him. Give God praise and glory. I want you to understand, on this coming Tuesday at 1030, we're going to come back and show you how to discover your dream. We're going to take the word dream and we're going to break down every letter in that word and we're going to break down that word so you'll be able to discover the dream that God has for your life. It's coming to Wednesday at 12 noon. We're going to teach you how can you expect the unexpected. Lord, show me how to expect the unexpected. Amen? And this is part of learning how to deal as a Christian in the COVID-19 crisis. I hope you've been blessed by these words. I hope you've been blessed for what God is doing for us and to us. Amen? I want to remind you again, if you want to support this ministry, man, we appreciate uh, your levels of support as we realize that during this particular time, we not only we have to sustain the ministry of GYZ, but we didn't want to be able to ask God to give us a surplus so that we'd be able to supply ministry as is needed. This crisis is going to bring crises. And this crisis this is more than going to bring a health crisis. It's going to bring financial crisis. It's going to bring all kinds of different crises that people are going to go through, emotional crisis. So we want to be an uh, agent that will be able to supply ministry to people who are going to be needed. So your gifts are really important and really important to us as we continue to move on this journey and continue to be the church. We might be out of the fellowship like we want to, but we're still the church. And we want to continue to be that church, and we want you to continue to do that. Five ways you can support the ministry of GYZ. Number one, you can go to our website, which is greateryoungzion.org, and in that website, uh, you will be able to uh, hit donations, and you can give that way. You can also go to your bank and do bill pay, and then they will send a check directly to the church. You can also uh, go to our app, which is Give Plus, and uh, you can pay directly through our app, and you can check with our office, and then someone will call you back and walk you through that process as well, if that is your choice. You can mail your gift to Greek GYZ at P.O. Box 1864 three. We'd be happy to receive your gift that way. Or you can just drive by the church, come through the office area of the church, and you'll see an office drop box. Drop your gift in the drop box, and uh, make sure that it falls into the drop box. And, uh, and uh, we'll be more than happy and appreciate what you give and how you support the ministry of GYZ. Amen. I want to encourage all of our auxiliary leaders, especially, I want to encourage you to, uh, to be supportive uh, to the different conference calls and different prayer uh, calls that are throughout our church, amen, they're done through our, our GYG Covenant Sisters, uh, our Brotherhood Ministry, and so when you get an opportunity to do that, we're asking you to call in, amen, and be a part of praying for our church, and and you also get updates on what's going on in the ministry. We want you to keep informed and to stay connected with GYZ because that's exactly what we do uh, while we are here. Amen. So we're keen to ask you to pray for the medical community uh, as they continue to minister to those whose people are still losing their lives. We are close to one million cases of people who have been infected by this virus and over 50,000 plus uh, who have died from this virus as well. So we ask you to be safe. You know, continue to social distance, continue to put your mask on. Uh, those are things that are for your safety that we want to be able to do uh, what we're supposed to do and listen to our medical community as they give us guidelines as we go through this particular pandemic. Amen. I believe that God is going to do only what God can do, and we trust in God to handle this, to handle our situation. In the meantime, we want to pray for our national leaders for their wisdom that they on national, state, and local levels, that they continue to make good decisions. We pray for that today. For all of our sick and shut in, not only those who are afflicted by this virus, but those who are in the hospital, uh, you know, uh, we just continue to lift them up on today, that God will continue to bless them for those who are sick at home as well. We also want to continue to pray uh, for those people who have lost the battle to this disease. Pray for their families 
that they will help them through this struggle as well. Let us bow our heads and pray at this time. God, we want to thank you again for what you've allowed us to experience and what you've allowed us to be able to do. We lift our hands up to you for which come in all of our help, and we put our trust and hope in you. We know that no matter what's got us, you got it. And we continue to trust you right now. We give you all the glory. We give you all the honor. And Lord, we give you all the praise. For we ask it all in Jesus' name. Let us all say together, amen. Looking forward, Tuesday, 1030, how to discover your dream. God bless you. We'll see you next time.